Welcome to video 105. This is in regards to apertures. This is going to be part one, where we're going to use the aperture manager to query and edit some of the apertures that we have. So the apertures, the aperture manager is showing over here. Now, how would you get that? You would, you can get it from the view aperture manager or from the corresponding icon if you have that on your toolbar. And so if you don't have that on any of your toolbars, you may want to review the video 303 where we are showing how you can change the toolbars. So the aperture manager, as we mentioned in earlier videos, the apertures are always the ones that are from the layer that is in plane number one. So plane number one, regardless if I have other layers in a color, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I have them active or not. I'm always only showing or seeing the apertures from the layer that's in plane one. So this is my list. So if I switch to another layer, I get a different list, a different list, a different list. So UCAM stores the apertures per layer. And again, we're showing them as soon as we have a layer in plane one. So let's have a look. What can we do with the aperture manager? So one of the uh, interesting things that you that uh, that you typically want to do is let's interrogate what a particular feature, how it's built up, what aperture is being used to build. So if we zoom in, for example, over here, and we use the query, which is this the uh, arrow with the question mark. If I click here. Uh, it tells me that's a circle of eight and it's uh, used to draw. Here is a circle of 32 and it's used to flash. Here's another circle, circle of 56 and it's used to flash. So what are we showing actually? As soon as I click on one of these, it makes that aperture the active or more exactly the current aperture. Remember that term because it's going to come back in other videos. The current aperture is the one that will be used if I'm going to like insert an aperture or, or insert features, uh, which we will do in other videos. It will always be using the current aperture. So the current aperture, let's investigate a little bit. It shows it over here, highlight it. So what are we all showing? It, we show the number. This is the aperture number or in the old days, these would be referred to as decodes from the Gerber uh, terminology. Those things were called decodes. So the aperture number 11. Name, I've don't, I didn't assign any names to these apertures. Uh, normally you wouldn't get them like that uh, unless you are using uh, data formats that actually assign names to the apertures. In, other videos, you will see that we will be using that name for some specific purposes. But again, in this example, there is no name assigned. The next thing is the definition. So we abbreviate things like this case, CIR, short for circle. Uh, eight, it's eight mils. My unit is mils. And uh, of course, if I would switch that to inches, I would see those expressed in inches. So the definition. The next col uh, column is the polarity level. So in this case, all of these features that we see over here are on the same level. So, and they are all positive. So we see one P, one positive level. The next column shows if this feature is being used to flash, which is the F, or in case of polygons, which we will return to later, polygons, contours, they will also be shown over here, the count of the regions that are being formed by the contours. But here we see that there's nothing for this circle eight, there's nothing in this column, but there are numbers behind in the next column, which is the D for draw. The following column is A for arcs. And then the final column is VT, V text or VT in this case, as, as far as I'm showing it which is for vector texts. Those will all come back in future videos. In this case, suffice to say that I have a circle eight and it's 
one polarity and it's used 1648 times. Now, what if I want to see all of the these circle eights on the entire layer? Well, I can do that very simply by highlighting it here and then saying here, aperture select. This now shows me all of these circle eights over the entire layer. I could have used the shortcut for that, which is this, or I'm going to now use it to deselect it like that. So query and select are two very interesting features or, or functions to use. So here we have a 50, 27. Let's look at uh, like one of these flashes here. Well, that's a flash of 195 and there's three of them. So if we select, we see one, two, three. Now, what if, for example, there's a square over here, there's a square of six. If I want to edit this, because the square of six is actually being used for the filling of these SMDs. So by using the square, the designer used it to fill with a square, so we're getting straight edges. Now, what if I don't like those straight edges and I would like to round them off? Because in reality, they typically don't, they don't really are straight anyway. So we can go in here. I can double click it and that brings up the aperture editor. Now I noticed that even though it says SQU over here, it doesn't say square over here because square is actually a special type or well, not so much special, but a rectangle, which has the X and Y size the same. So rather than overload this list over here with all kinds of different types, a square is a rectangle with the same size. So if I would want to change the size, uh, I would just type it in here. Or if I would want to change the shape, I can simply go here, change it from a rectangle to a circle, type in the size. In this case, I want it to be six and I click on apply. Now it's being rounded off because rather than having squares, the filling is done with round. We will be returning to the, to the aperture manager in other videos. For now, let's suffice to say that um, double clicking is to open up the editor. You can also click on aperture edit, which will do the same thing. There's also shortcuts, alt key and E. And there's even the ability to set these up over here as toolbars as well, which is part of a different video. So query, edit, and all these capabilities that we have over here. And that's where I will leave video 105. Thank you.